Yo, let's go. That energy flow worked out, baby. Way to scam the market makers. Wait, hold on, guys. I'm getting a call. One second. Hello? Raiders, stop trading now. Who's this? This is the market makers. I'm telling you to stop trading. Now, you stick to providing liquidity. Leave beating the markets to me, big boy. Whatever you say, little boy. Oh, you calling me scrawny? Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Man, you should have seen how much liquidity I gave your mom last night. Nah, you can't do that. Nah, nah. Highest that was volume right all there. Year. You got to shut up. I'm oh, going to come over here. I'm going to beat the All right, I'll tell you what. Out of you. Quad witching. Meet me out back. I bet. You're not going to be ready. Traders, this Friday is one of the most important days in the stock market, at least for the next few months. And the big question is, are you prepared for it? Well, my name is Andrew Raider, and that's my job today to show you everything about the markets, my trades moving forward, and a game plan you can carry with you to be more profitable. And be more profitable starts with looking at the spy chart to see where we are in the markets. Now, I said this Friday is one of the most important dates for the stock market. I'm not joking. That is quad witching, where hundreds of billion dollars in options and other derivatives like futures expire. What does this mean to us? Well, market makers are going to do their absolute hardest to try to balance the markets into this date. And over the last few weeks, you guys know we've been discussing the different phases that the market has gone through. 30 days before marks the shakeout phase. You look at the chart, we've already gotten that. We had a big reversal down. It was all a fake out. It was all plan. And 14 days before the quad witching, you see what we call max pain. This is another pivot. You see a shift in velocity either up or down. And I'll throw this up on screen again. The most common structures are typically this during this time frame. You see a pump and then you get a dump that closes right in the middle or vice versa with a dump and a pump right in the middle. So what's happening right now? Well, the SPY is ripping up towards the expected range. This is a lot of momentum, especially with it only being Tuesday coming into Wednesday. Already coming up to the expected range shows there's a lot of strength in the market. But is this going to last? While last year's June quad witching date ended up in a huge pump to the upside with no stopping, I don't think so. And a lot of my tools and data actually point to something else. Now, the first tool that's gonna give us a better idea of what we need to trade is actually the RRG charts here. If you guys have been a follower of mine for a while, you should know what this is. But right here, this shows the money rotations in the market. Where's money going into and where is it going out of? And I have the sectors thrown up on this chart here. And what you'll notice is that technology XLK is on the weakening side, while the defensives and value sectors, such as staples, energy, all these other names, are coming in and improving from lagging. This tells us that money is rotating into defensives and value. What do we know? Why is that important? Because when money goes into defensives and value and out of tech, it's very often that you see a drop within two to three days of that happening. And given that this aligns with the quad witching pin move that we typically see where you get a run up into it during the two week time frame before that actual quad witching date, it makes sense that we could actually see a drop here. Now, the image I showed was actually from Friday. If we look at today's, you can see while it's gotten really messy, the technology is still not receiving the same amount of money as all the other defensive and values. So although this right here doesn't paint as clear of a picture as last Friday did, it still suggests that defensive and value is still underway and that we can expect a big drop here within the next few days. And this same idea translate when you go and you compare the major indices. Take a look at QQQ, SPY, the Dow Jones, and IWM, which is small caps and mid caps. What do you notice? Well, you should notice that QQQ, which is technology, which is, again, that growth side of the market, didn't receive much at all. It actually underperformed the SPY today, which is very unusual. And this is signs that they don't want technology. And on any gap down or turnaround, this thing could flush aggressively. And if you look at IWM and the Dow Jones, these are your small caps, mid caps, as well as your industrial stocks, all the what you consider value within the Dow Jones. This is actually doing pretty well. So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us closer to a trade idea. If they don't want growth, that means we should probably stay away from that into this Friday. But if they want value and defensive, maybe that's worth the upside trade. I think the better trade over these next few days into next week is going to be those value and defensive names. Growth is going to be really shaky. And I think the higher win rate trades are going to be found within these sectors. So what am I looking at? Well, trades that I'm still actively in is actually energy. This one I'm bullish on. There was an APA flow order that came in the other day. This is an energy name and it's actually a hedge trade. I know it says puts, but it is a hedge and therefore we bet against it when it comes in instantly. I took longs on APA for 628 and also 
Oxy, which actually did even better. Whenever I see option flow come in, I always consider if the name that the option flow actually came in is the best ticker to trade within that idea. And I determined that I think Oxy is actually the better one because that typically moves more. I call this a sympathy trade. When you see an idea come in on the option flow and you end up taking a different ticker, even though it's the same bullish energy idea. So bullish on Oxy into next week. Aside from energy, we have industrials going absolutely bonkers. Names that I'm in currently are FedEx, which has an earning catalyst next week. I think FedEx should see some type of earnings run up. Again, if you don't know what that is, it's just when you approach an earnings, there's a lot of hype around it and people pile into it, increasing the premium of your contracts, even if it doesn't go up that much. But industrials here, it seems last week, this actually liquidated. Check out this big hammer candle here that happened last week. You violated the low of the range. This is classic liquidation. Look at the buying pressure we have here. Names to watch for the continuation within industrials, home builders, DHI and URI. These are the ones that I'm going to be watching for continued upside. URI had a massive day, so expect some sort of contraction and then eventually a continuation to the upside. GE as well. This one is coming back towards the all-time high. I think for you equity traders, you're going to have a lot better time trading this to all-time highs. But for us options traders, it makes it a little tough to justify entering now. Any contraction or chop where we're at, I will look to long into that all-time high trade. Grab a quick 40, 50, 60% and leave it. And then finally, we have John Deere, DE. Now this one's a little special as the game plan to risk to reward is a little unbalanced. So what I'm gonna do to make this idea justified is actually wait for a chop around that 384.90. If DE can chop around here, uh, maybe gap down off of it, come back to it, I will be a buyer for 628 at the money calls on that 384.90. I think that's the key level trigger. And from there, I mean, you have a lot of range, two, 400 and above. So definitely something we could look at. But again, this Friday is the important date. After Friday, you will see a market pivot. That is a guarantee. And whichever direction that chooses is going to be what we're gonna roll with next. And moving away from value, we're actually looking at defensives. These are the next big trades I think are gonna do really well. Now, when it comes to plain defensives, why we like to take interest in this is when the markets drop, these actually tend to benefit. They see more upside even when the markets start to drop, at least for a short period after. And when I say defensive, most of the time I'm referring to consumer staples, XLP holdings, any of these names like Procter & Gamble, Walmart, all these guys target. These are the names I'm going to be targeting to the long side. Since I trade options, again, utilities, even all these other defensives like real estate, I can't trade those. The spreads are too wide. I mean, some of these spreads are wider than the legs of LA hookers. I'm allowed to make jokes on this channel. And honestly, when we look at the daily chart for XLP, you can see we've been chopping at this like 77 or 78 level for months now. I mean, even back, even years, back to the 22 of August was kind of the first peak where you started to chop here. So I believe, honestly, this is gearing up for a huge all-time high move. I think staples can easily get to 82 and above. So I'm going to be looking to play this short term. I'm not going to swing anything major, although that's a possibility. I'm going to try to find those intraday names and just catch the momentum to the upside. One name that's been really explosive is is Procter and Gamble. I like this one. I think you can play the high break, anything over 169. Try to catch that momentum back into all time highs as we are currently there. And finally, the last name in Staples that I'm going to be watching is actually going to be in Target. This was a consumer discretionary, but now it's a staple name. It recently made a new low and you did see a buying response off of it. Now, this could be a liquidation of the trend. However, what you will want to see to confirm that is a gap up off of that, an aggressive one at that, and then you can try to play the gap up. So while I'm not not going to be buying the dip on target because that's the risky thing you're not going to want to fight trend on this any major gap up around or above 1445 is going to trigger a pretty big move in the stock so that 14445 if you do gap above that or a gap up right below it and push into it with an intraday candle that's enough for me to long for 628 or if we don't touch that keep this trade on your watch list that level is still going to be important all right so we talked about some upside trades now i didn't mention any growth names within the upside again i don't think during this time especially with the risk of a huge pullback into 621 that we should be playing growth to the upside but i do have some downside trades that could see a huge six seven eight percent day and potentially a thousand percent return on the options by friday now one sector that has paid more than almost every other is semiconductors these contracts are expensive a lot of these stocks move like crazy but my trade idea on this is actually to short semiconductors. and how market reversals tend to happen even in the short term is the biggest stocks the leaders get the most aggressive sell-off when it comes time to actually sell them. because firms are more opt to take profit on their big winners first than to take it out of those smaller ones that they're still hoping to hold so i did a lot of 
research, I'm trying to find which semiconductor is going to get wrecked first. I think I have an idea. Now, I don't think Nvidia or AMD are going to be the culprits of a massive drop. These names are kind of the babies of Wall Street and they typically won't see that huge massive drop. So that leaves us with the couple of names, MU, SMCI, and AVGO. I think the strength in AVGO is absolutely not worth my time, so I'm not gonna be looking there, but rather SMCI, ARM, and MU. One of these names is likely to have an eight plus percent day to the downside soon. And given the history of all these stocks, I think it's gonna be SMCI. So while I can't sit here and say a key level to short at, what you're gonna wanna be watching is Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. If we do see a gap down, any gap down I think is worth trying to take a stab at SMCI into this expiration, even if you have a tight stop. Because either this week or next week, it's likely gonna trigger a big red day for these semis. I don't think it's likely we see a massive run up continuing into Friday, like we saw last June. Now, one chart we've been looking at a lot recently have been the leaders and the laggers in the market. And I'll throw it up right here. This is the Coifin chart. I have this from June 7th all the way up till now, which is June 17th, 18th. Why I have it from June 7th is that is when Max Payne started two weeks ahead of the quad witching expiration. So whenever the market dynamics change, I change my scope of what I'm seeing the rotations in, right? You could take the time frame all the way after 10 years and you'll see a different rotation. So we need to be specific and narrow in what we're trying to look at and what information we want. Right now in the markets, you can see the laggers. You can see all these different names at the bottom, clean energy have been getting hard and a lot of other names. However, the one I'm interested in, one of the most is Jets. Jets has one of the weakest setups, especially in UAL all these other guys. I think these are going to get a flush down soon. UAL is my pick to the downside. It's chopping at the low. You already had a tag of that 48.36, and I think you're gonna get a nice big three, four percent day here to the downside. Again, 628 contracts is the move. I wouldn't go for you know this week or this Friday as that's kind of risking it and pushing the envelope a little too much. And after 621, it'll take me about one to three days to see where they start piling money in after this expiration. Because again, when money expires, they're gonna have to put it somewhere else and firms will reallocate all this money. So we're gonna see where the rotation start to favor and I'll jump on it as soon as I can and post it for you guys here or in the rate of report. <coughs> so just be watching for that. Now, another downside trade that I have is actually in retail XRT. These holdings have a lot of weakness in them. And one name I'm looking at is actually Macy's. Macy's here is chopping right at the liquidity zone here, right around 18. So I actually have 628 at the money puts. This is at my trigger and I will hold these for any flush down and sell for whatever I can get around 60, 70, 80% and hold the runners. Now, what other tools can we look at? Of course, the option flow. I found some orders that could be valuable to you guys. Now, the first flow I found was actually today. When I was scanning, I found this McDonald's put. Now, this was a 255 strike put that they placed 100K and they bought it in the morning. If you look today, well, of course, McDonald's dropped and it did not make a new low, which is very important. So I have a theory that this is going to have a nice recovery to the upside, but we have to be careful on when we take a trade here. Now this guy got an in the money put for next week and given that he was rewarded instantly, it actually makes the bias for the market makers to actually push this above his strike by his expiration. While in a perfect universe, I'd like to say that since we're so close to the low, let's just finish the fifth wave, get it over with, and then buy the dip. That may not happen and we might miss the trade entirely. So I have two scenarios for this trade. If we do go and finish that final leg to the downside, I'm gonna be a buyer at 248.34, given that the momentum is not too strong into it. But if we don't make a new low, well, we have to have a game plan for if it just pops right now. So what I'm gonna do is actually be a buyer at 251.65 for 628 at the money call. Again, we are betting against this guy and I think this has range all the way up to 256.29. I'm gonna take a stab with smaller position size as the nature of this trade is relatively risky. Now, the last flow that I found this week is actually another put trade, but this time we're following it. It's on UNH here. It's a 65K order for 477.5 strike for 621. Now, typically within my flow strategy, I do not follow under 100K orders because they don't really have an impact on the market as much. But this is exactly why I'm following him. I think the idea here is super intelligent to try to see a leg down in the markets and another flush in UNH. Now, if we do open above 479.75 tomorrow, I will be taking this trade to the downside or even gap down, I'm gonna follow either way. But the preferred entry is to get in before the low break of the current low, which is 479.75. 75 basically. So watch UNH to the downside for the remainder of this week. And finally, your brief lesson of the day. This is sponsored by The Rate Report. This is where you guys can check out all my professional trade ideas, game plans, and reports posted every single week and month, along with other cool data tools to use on the custom platform. But today's lesson, I want to talk about specifically why I took this APA trade and why it's so important to know how I did it.
So for those in our Discord group, you'll know that my mentors and I heavily focus on option flow. And more specifically, there are certain orders we look for based off criteria that we like to find. This order came in on APA. It's what we consider a hedge order, and we actually bet against it as soon as we see it. Well, how did I go from APA to Oxy? Well, see, this guy is betting on APA to go to the upside, and APA is not the biggest holding up energy. So if he's betting on one of the smaller names to go up, don't you think that the bigger names within energy are also likely to go up? So even though this guy is hedging on APA, this is really a bullish energy in general trade idea. And that maybe, even though he's betting on APA, that there's a better ticker to trade to maximize our gains to the upside. And that's why I went on a hunt to try to maximize my profit and find another trade. So not only did I long APA, but I also longed Oxy as well. This trade ended up going 300% while APA only went up around 70%. And this is such an important lesson, guys. Whenever you find some sort of data, whether you follow our option flow strategy or any strategy you follow, whenever you see an idea come in or a piece of data, always consider the alternatives to that idea. And that that one ticker you're looking at might not actually be the best one to long if you want to maximize your profit on it. I'll see you later this week. I got a boxing match with the market makers. Bye-bye. I've been on a vibe kind of hard to describe. I'm in between I'm good and it's fine, but I'm tired of the grind. Then I come alive in the night to realize.